Friday marks five years since the day that MH370 disappeared with 239 souls on board. And the plane, of course, was flying between Kuala Lumpur and Beijing. Don Toma is the chief executive of Aerion, the company that makes global aircraft tracking and surveillance systems. Good to have you, sir. Thank you for talking to us. Your system will track planes on the basis of twice every second. Why has it taken so long to get this? Well, that's a good question, Richard. As you know, MH370 really highlighted the fact that 70% of the world's airspace has no surveillance for air traffic control. Now, the world's air traffic control organizations are in the middle of a global upgrade. They're moving from 1940s radar-based technology to state-of-the-art GPS tracking of aircraft. So by 2020, all the airplanes will be equipped with ADSB transponders or transponders that will right. send out these GPS signals. What we do, we've launched a network of 66 satellites with our partners at Iridium Satellite. They've, it's a communications company. They've launched 66 new satellites. We've put a little transponder receiver on board each satellite that receives these signals being emitted from the aircraft. That provides us the ability to provide global coverage no matter where an aircraft is, over the poles, over the oceans, over the deserts, we can see those airplanes. All right, now, as you see them, uh, should it be mandatory from ICAO or elsewhere that every plane is able or is required to have pretty much real-time tracking and surveillance? I know there were new law rules that came in after uh, MH370, but they weren't as rigorous as real-time. Yeah, there's, there's absolutely you know, two elements that came out of MH370. The first is a mandate that requires global flight tracking. By, 20, by last November of 2018, every aircraft needed to be able to track it at least once every 15 minutes when it's outside of radar coverage. What we do at Arion is provide once emitted updates to airlines like Malaysia Airways, like Bangkok Airways, like uh, Qatar Airlines to provide them with full tracking of their aircraft wherever they are. Um, the second element, as you pointed out, is the issue of whether or not a transponder can be turned off. ICAO, the airlines, the pilots, are, and the aircraft manufacturers are still working on that issue. They're trying to determine a way to ensure that these transponders or tracking devices can't be turned off right. uh, through malicious intent. So, Don, really, I mean, at the end of the day, could MH370 happen again? The reality is, Yes, it could, I would suggest, but it's unlikely. I think it's un unlikely, um, and if it did occur, you know, one thing with Arion, we'll be able to track that aircraft till the second that transponder was turned off. So that makes a big difference in terms of search and rescue, in terms of searching for the aircraft. Really, it's the difference between looking over a 160,000 square kilometer area versus two or three square kilometers. A big difference when you're trying to find a missing aircraft. So, in a sentence, uh, how many airlines have bought your system and how many are you hoping for? Yeah, well, first, we're launching this service with air traffic control organizations. So, the system is in place. We'll be finishing up the testing of it over the next several weeks. And our partners at NAV Canada and NATS in the UK will be using this to operate aircraft in real time across the North Atlantic starting in, in April. Um, with our partners at FlightAware, we've introduced a service that meets this mandate right. for ICAO. There's are over uh, 4,000 aircraft that are currently signed up, representing you know, 50 to 100 airlines. So it's significant adoption of this. It's a very low-cost way for airlines to comply with these new regulations.